free in then yeah yeah we can see your and everyone here yeah, see this yes we can see i'm see turning you. off my video is it all right we want to see you <laughs> yeah no, you no, want no. to see me no, no, no. <laughs> Okay. I think it's okay. uh I think can everyone see the uh, full screen thing? Yes, yes. Yes, Rang. Right. Very clear. Very so, uh, clear. so I will be discussing about wound biology, the wound healing process. And we will learning about you know, introduction of what are the types of wound that we are going to see. And what would be the definition of what is uh, defined by a wound and things like that. And a little bit of uh, history on wounds and wound care. Types of wound and the pathological or the physiological process of wound healing. And uh, complications of wound healing. And what factors would affecting wound healing. And little bit of the management of wound care. And uh, this management of wound care is the main objective of this course, I think. And uh, so I'm not going into great detail on that part. So it will be done by other lectures. I think probably one or two had already been done. So definition-wise, wound. The wound is defined as an injury to the body that involves damaging the integrity of tissues or body structures. So any wound, is an injury to the body involving damage to the integrity of tissues or body structures. So that is what you call wound. So healing is the body's response to that injury. The body's response to the injury and attempt to restore the normal structure and the function. It implies the disappearance of the process of inflammation and replacement of the tissue either by repair or regeneration, right? That is what we call healing. In simple words, an ulcer is a discontinuation of the epithelium. So anywhere you, you see an ulcer, that means it's discontinuation of the epithelium. Wound is an injured part of the body. Healing is restoring the body structure and function, either by regeneration or repair. These are the simple words, but these are the exact definitions. Right. If you go back to the history, there are a lot of things that were used for treatment of wounds. The oldest things were about 1500 before Christ. That means now it's 2000. Uh, year 2023. Now, if you add 1500 years, it's more than 3500 years ago. Egyptians have described how would you dress a wound or how to how to make a wound heal. So they have used lint, animal grease, honey, as tropical. And actually, nowadays also some people use honey as a wound healing agent, and there are Things that are made from honey also, as some of these things are there. And Egyptians believe that closing a wound <clears throat> to preserve the soul. So they, 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 they thought if there's a wound, the soul will escape through that wound. So in a, in a word, if a bad wound is there, patient can die from that. So they, they, they believe if there's a major injury, the soul will escape through that. So in a way, it's true. Right? So Greeks later the dif differentiate between acute wound and chronic wounds. And there's a famous surgeon called Galen, a Greek surgeon, and he has made a lot of contributions to the field of wound care and uh, how to dress a wound and removal of pus and what is what is meant by pus and what is containing in pus and those things were described by Galen. But the modern wound management came into the picture in about 1980s and at that time they have identified a lot of factors the chemical factors the biological factors 
what they call interleukins, interferons, tissue growth factors, and various factors were identified during that area. And that time, they have introduced and found out the action of these factors, and they describe the those factors in the wound healing process. Now, types of wounds. There are basically, we divide our wounds into either acute wound or a chronic wound. That is our first division. Now, in acute wounds, there are closed wounds and open wounds. Closed wounds are contusion. So, again, a wound is a tissue injury. Injured tissue or a part of an organ is a wound. So, closed wounds are, you can't see anything outside and it's you can see inside the tissues have damage. You can see a bluish discoloration or an aberration. Epithelium is breached, but the underlying epithelium is not fully breached, which is aberration. Skin breach, only the upper layer of epithelium has gone out. If its lower layer has gone, it can become an ulcer. This is the hematoma. That means the underlying collection of blood indicating there is a tissue injury underneath. There are open wounds, there are incised wounds. These are called cut injuries or sharp object can or this kind of incised wound and lacerated wounds. A blunt injury which is forceful and it has torn the tissue. Skin tissue has torn without any incision. So it's ragged edges. Edges are not clean cut like incised wound. Others are crush wounds, so grind injuries and, you know, crush injuries, people will go, you know, if 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 a leg goes something, go under a tire or something, they get crushed. So, these are crush injuries. Underlying tissues, skin, more than skin, the other tissues like muscles, bones, they get crushed. So they are penetrating injuries. That is stabs. So, if something was stabbed inside the body, you can call penetrating injuries. Penetrating injuries also, we can again little subdivide them into either a high velocity penetrating injury and low velocity penetrating injury. So that means that the injurious agent has come in a low velocity, like a like a stab knife or a kind of a uh, you know body call. People uh, stab with various objects, you no know, knife are the commonest thing, but Sometimes screwdrivers, sometimes sharp, long objects. Those kind of things are stabs. But they, they all are low velocity stab injuries. And high velocity stab injuries are what they call gunshot injuries, missile injuries. So when there's blast and firearm injuries are what you call high velocity penetrating wounds. So those are the injuries are completely different when there's high velocity and low velocity injuries. Other things are chronic wounds. So what are these chronic wounds? Chronic wounds are due to either acute wound which has delayed in healing or a wound itself starts spontaneously and fails to heal. These things are due to a underlying problem of the patient. There may be poor blood supply, Wound may get infected frequently. There may be a foreign body, or there may be underlying bone is infected, or there may be an inner problem of wound healing process, like they may have deficiencies in various substances which are required to healing, like you know collagen healing problem may be there. You know sometimes patient is poorly nourished; they don't have enough nutrition to get. To, for the for the process of wound healing. So those are the problems. These chronic wounds are there to, to continue as the wound without getting it healed. The natural process of the body is to heal the wound. If there's a wound comes there, the wound has to heal by nature. That is what you call a wound healing, either by replacement of tissue or by regeneration of the tissue. It should heal. Right? So, causes like venous ulcers, venous insufficiency. When there are venous insufficiency, blood 
is cooling down. So because of blood cooling down, the blood supply, the oxygen supply is limited. So it becomes venous acid. Same way, when there's blood supply is poor, or when there's blood supply is not there adequately, or there is neuropathic causes, where there is nerves are not functioning properly, there may be ulcers like this, right? Pressure ulcers, diabetic pressure ulcers can be there like this. Sometimes they get vasculitis. So those kind of in, in, inherited problems can cause chronic wounds. So if you could go into basic physiology of wound healing, the process involves either regeneration or repair. That is how we started. Wound healing is by either regeneration or repair. So regeneration is when the healing takes place by proliferation of the parenchymal cells, usually results in complete restoration of the organ or the tissue. So regeneration is if a muscle gets damaged, the muscle is replaced by muscle and the damage is repaired. For example, the best tissue it can repair like that is the liver. If there's a damage to the liver, the liver cells will divide among themselves and replace the lost volume. That's very, very commonly we see. Now, when we are removing a part of liver due to a cancer or various other things, if you remove part of the liver, <clears throat> if you leave that the rest of the liver for about another, uh, another one year, by one year, if you do a CT scan, you can see a complete liver has come back again. No changes. The same size of the liver is there as previously. That's what you call regeneration. It will heal back again. Repair is when healing takes place by proliferation of connective tissue, not the parenchymal tissue. We call it mesenchymal tissue. When the healing process is by scar tissue, connective tissue has formed and replaced the damaged tissue and resulting in fibrosis. So that process, the damaged tissue is not there anymore, but the injury has healed by scarring. That is called repair. So two processes of wound healing, regeneration and repair. So regeneration, some parenchymal cells are short-lived. They have very short lifespan and some parenchymal cells have very long lifespan, like nerves, muscles, kind of a tissue have very long lifespan. They don't die. When they are mature enough, they don't die. Some tissues, they have a very short life, like, like the skin, intestinal cells, kind of thing. They quickly die and another one will replace. So this process is undergoing something called the cell cycle. So regeneration is by increasing the cell, cell, cell cycle frequency and replacing the normal tissue by the same tissue which was lost. So there are a lot of factors which will influence this uh, growth factors. You don't have to remember this. I'm just putting them as a, as a you know part of completion of the lecture, right? So endothelial growth factor and fibroblast growth factor, platelet derived growth factor, tissue growth factor beta, and the first report. First one is epithelial epithelial derived growth factor, and the last one is endothelial growth factor. So those are the some, some factors, there are some many more factors, only a few I have mentioned here. So those are the factors that is increasing the cells to proliferate again and again and replace the damaged tissue. The proliferation of the original cells from the margin of the injured with migration so that to cover the gap. So if you remove a part of the liver, the surrounding tissues of the liver will divide rapidly and replace that gap. That is called regeneration. Proliferation and migrated cells will subsequently differentiate into maturation and so will become restore the organ or the tissue which is for damage. That is called regeneration. Repair is replacement of the injured tissue by fibrous tissue. Two processes. One is granulation tissue formation and later the wound get contracted. So repair is response to take place by participation of mesenchymal cells 
consisting of connective tissue, stem cells, fibrocytes, histiocytes, endothelial cells, macrophages, platelets, and parenchymal cells of the injured dog. So all these things will come together and form a scar tissue. Right. So repair, there are three phases in the repair of granulation tissue. First phase, now if you imagine now if a skin got cut by a by a glass or glass cut injury. Soon after what will happen is there is something called an inflammatory phase. So following trauma, there will be a blood clot. So initially you see they'll start if there's a wound, it will start bleeding. And later, if you cover it up or you compress it for a while, if you don't compress it while for a while, it will bleed a little more. But later the blood clot will come there and blood get clotted. And this clot will have an inflammatory response. And that inflammatory response will have plasma cells, neutrophils, monocytes, those will come. There will be inflammation around that tissue for about one day. Then what will happen is, over the next few days, this blood clot will get dissolved and the underlying tissues will heal up. How that happened? the phase of clearance, a combination of proteolytic enzymes liberated from the neutrophils, autolytic enzymes from the dead tissue, and the phagocytic activities of macrophages will clear the necrotic tissue and debris of red bodies. Now what will happen? The neutrophils from the edges, they will come and grow into this blood cell and they will little by little eat up this clot and dissolve it. Second phase is, third phase is, in growth of granulation tissue. This phase consists of two main processes. One is angiogenesis and fibrogenesis. So we go back and again, what are these two, two processes? Angiogenesis. Angiogenesis is formation of new blood vessels at the site of the injury take place by proliferation of endothelial cells from the margin of the damaged blood vessels. So there will be so what the, the process that we discuss a cut injury happened to arm um, or leg go somewhere. So first, there will be a blood clot. The later what will happen is this blood clot will gradually dissolve by neutrophil action and eat up the blood vessels. While that is happening, there is cut edge of the capillaries and other cells there on the corner of the tissue. Now those things will grow while that blood clot being dissolved by the neutrophils, there will be blood, new blood vessels will grow into this open cut wound from the either edges. blood vessels. This process is called angiogenesis. Angio means blood vessels. Genesis means recreating, creating blood vessels. So these new blood vessels will grow from either edges and they will come in the middle and come together. Angiogenesis is stimulated by with proteolytic destruction and of the basement membrane and take place under the influence of the growth factors VEG, VEGF, PDGF, and TGF. If you can remember these things, it's better. VG, VEGF is vascular endothelial growth factor. PDGF means platelet-derived growth, growth factor. TGF beta means tissue growth factor beta. Now, these things are vascular endothelial growth factor will be secreted by blood vessels when it get damaged for it to get form more new blood vessels. Platelet derived growth factor will be secreted by platelet which is there in the clot. So that will make sure the blood vessels will grow towards the clot. Tissue growth factor beta will be detected by damaged tissue to increase by fibroblast increasing the connective tissue to grow into the, the open edges of the wound because the blood vessels can't be there just lying down so there should be tissues also will grow there should be a blood vessel should be lying on some connective tissue so tissue should be also growing that's why tissue growth factor beta will come so other cytokines will also come there and increase this process of cellular proliferation then one step one is angiogenesis step two is fibrogenesis that means Sorry. Step 2 is fibrogenesis. Fibrogenesis is basically by tissue growth factor. There will be fibrous tissue will come and support this blood vessels to grow. 
So wound start contracting by after two or three days. Now in three days time, when it comes to three days, if there's small wound, the blood vessels will come and go in bridge the two sides and that will close up the process and there will be a fibroblast, the contracting fibroblast will be coming there and for the next 14 days, that means next two weeks, the scar will become contracted. The two edges will pull each other together and the wound will become smaller. That is what you call scar contraction. So, factors are myofibroblast, that means moving fibroblast will appear, activating elevation tissue and the wound contraction. And the cells have features of immediate, uh, intermediate between fibroblast and smooth blood cells and they can pull each other and make the wound smaller. And the cells in the center would be decreasing the area of the size of the defect. So this is what will happen in diagrammatic view. First move the initial hemorrhage. Now when there's cut in there like that, there's a clot. So what will happen immediately in the first 24 hours, the neutrophils, the inflammatory cells, they will come and start going into this clot and start dissolving the clot. Right? And the cut edges of the can you see my uh, point? Eh? Okay, I will get a point option. So there is a point. Eh? Right. Now, now, here is the blood clot from the cartridge, and these are the neutrophils which are coming on the either side, and they will grow into this, you know, they will dissolve into this clot and start degrading. From the first day onwards, for within the first 24 hours. In the third to seven day, the new vessels from the either cut edge of the vessels, the new fibroblast will come up where the, the uh, angiogenesis will start to occur from the either field and the defect which was made by the cut injury and, and the blood clot. The, the the spaces dissolved by the blood the neutrophil fails, the blood vessels will grow into that gradually. And later what will happen, the blood vessel will be restored, the connective tissues will be restored, and there will be little scar tissue here. And the wound epithelium will be completely covered up. Usually by 72 hours, if it is a small wound, this will completely heal up. By third day, polymorphs are replaced by macrophages. Macrophages will completely dissolve the clot part. And can you remember now, if, if you make a small cut injury, this is what you call the scab. If you cover it again, the blood clot, the remaining part of the blood clot. Ultimately, it will just de-roof. Right? So, epithelial changes in the basal cell proliferation and margin towards the incision. Now, the basal cells, now this is a wound, this is a cut injury, looks like a surgical cut injury, and this is where the thread goes. Now, when we are suturing the wound, we are putting a suture there, now this is the suture line, right? The suture track. So, what will happen is, from either edge, the basal cells of proliferation and margination towards the incision. Now, what will happen is the basal cells, the cells from the base of the epithelium will come into the edge of the wound like this. The wound covered by layers of epithelium within 48 hours. By 48 hours, the wound will be completely covered and taken out. Maximum 72 hours. The migrate epithelium Epidermal cells will separate the underlying viable dermis from the overlying necrotic material and the clot, forming a scab. Now, these cells will separate the healing underlying tissue with the scab and the external part. Now, this underlying part still healing, fibroblasts are coming, 
new vessels are, you know, the new vessels angiogenesis is taking place uh, down here and the epithelial cells will cover it and make sure underlying healing process will not get disturbed. The basal cells from the margins will continue to divide. By fifth day, multi-layered new epidermis will form and differentiate into superficial deep layers. So by day five, there will be multiple layers of cells will be there and it will show new epidermis from the deep and superficial layers and it will separate down. So primary union and secondary union. By primary union means if you if you there's a cut injury, if the cut edges of the wound is approximated to each other, the healing will be occurs in primary union. If the cut edges are far away from each other, the healing will be by something called secondary union. So the organization is by clear third day, fibroblasts will also invade the wound area. By fifth day, new collagen fibroblasts will start forming and dominate it till healing is completed. By fourth week, scar tissues will scan to cellular vascular elements and few implementary cells are there. By four weeks, the wound is completely healed. Right. This is by primary intention, this is by second intention. Now there is only a scab. Small cut injury, edges are approximated to each other very, very closely, and immediately the epithelium will come and start the underlying process of uh, angiogenesis and fibrogenesis will occur down here, and the epithelium will grow and ultimately push the blood clot out as cap, and the tissue will be restored with repair and minimal scarring, maybe only small scar. But if there's gap between the process, it is difficult for the epithelial cells to bridge each other very quickly. So it will take some time for the epithelial cells to bridge. So there will be underlying tissue and the overlying blood clot will be remaining for a longer period. The granulation tissue or the angiogenesis and fibrogenesis will occur down here gradually and it will take time with time, there will be epithelial cells will come to each other and make a scar, make a scab there, pushing out the scab there. And the underlying scar is much bigger than underlying scar for primary union or healing with primary invasion. The maturation of collagen activates a structural integrity, but it won't be it won't be like regenerated healing. So complications of wound healing. So what can go wrong here? Number one, the process can be impaired by infection. If this wound get infected, if this blood clot is rich supply of protein and nutrients for bacteria. So if we get infected, the healing becomes delayed. If there's implantation, say for example, this foreign body, some kind of a thing has gone, gone to this wound and it got implanted. Now body is trying to take it out, but it has already fixed into the body tissues. Now you can't take it out. So there will longer time will take it to heal. And this process can cause pigmentation. After healing, sometimes the scar is darker than the normal area. Deficient scar formation. So scar is not getting proper. Uh, so the wound is delaying healing. Hypertrophic scar. There's more granulation tissue will form and more scar tissue than usually than the, than the usual size of the wound. Scar is bigger than the wound. And keloid formation. So, scar is going beyond the wound. Scar is bigger. It's called a hypertrophied scar. Scar is going 
beyond the wound is called keloid formation. Very rarely, the scar can undergo malignant transformation. You call it marginal instances. These are very, not very common, but that's commonly seen in burn scars. If there's a big burn injury, later they can, I'm going to, the scar of the burn injury can have transformed into a malignant ulcer. Right. So what factors affecting wound dealing? So basically there are two broad classification of factors affecting wound dealing. One is called local factors and one is systemic factors. Someone is uh, someone is uh, on the mic or muted, not not the microphone. Sorry. Yes, so local factors and systemic factors are there. So if you take the systemic factors, so that will generally affect healing all over the areas. One is age. Younger the age, fast it will heal. The children, very quickly the wounds heal. If it's a neonate, very quickly it will heal. It say even in neonate, the first 10 days if you do a surgery, there won't be even a scar. You can't even even scar. The skin can regenerate in children, in, in neonates. So if you do a surgery on a small baby, less than 10, 10 days of age, there won't be a scar. And elderly, we are older and older, the healing becomes delayed due to various factors. Nutrition. So if the patient is not nourished well, especially proteins, vitamins, and zinc are the main factors. I will go with that later. So if your nutrition is not adequate enough, your healing is poor. If the patient is having a systemic infection, like a, like a tuberculosis kind of a disease, and its healing is delayed. Uncontrolled diabetic, metabolic problem like uncontrolled diabetic, wound healing delays. Hematological abnormalities like unusual blood cells, unusually functioning blood cells, the healing becomes delayed. Chronic organ disease, chronic liver cell disease, chronic renal failure, COPD, congestive cardiac failure. So any major organ failure diseases will affect wound healing badly. So you need to identify if a patient is not having wound, if their wounds are not healing on time, you need to find out are there any systemic factors. So if there's no systemic factors, then you have to see whether there are any local factors like local infection. So when you see the wound, whether the wound is discharging pus or whether the wound is having surrounding inflammatory features like redness, swelling, pain, and local lymph node enlargement. So there are signs of infection. Poor blood supply. We have to see whether there's any blood pulses are there or the blood sound and geogram. There are various ways to find out this blood supply is good. And the venous filter. So blood supply and arterial supply and venous both comes in blood supply. If the venous return is not good, that means blood supply is not good. So check the venous drainage if it's good, good or not. Movement. If that part of the body is at a constantly moving site, you need to immobilize that. Otherwise, wound will never heal. Exposure to ionizing radiation. Now, the no oncologist will irradiate until the wound is completely healed. If there is already ionized radiation is given for that area of the skin, it is anyway have poor healing properties. <coughs> that is because of blood supply. Again, blood supply, the neovascularization or the angiogenesis will be poor after irradiation. 
foreign body. If the wound is not healing, you find out whether there's a foreign body is inside. Why it is not healing? That is very common due to, you know, the last year, you know, the last uh, decades we had a ethnic war and a lot of people are having chronic wounds and there are a lot of sharpness, small, small part foreign bodies inside and they have constantly discharging sinuses, right? So, because of the foreign body, until it removes, it will never heal. Bone involvement. So, a chronic wound, either initial phase or by the secondary, if the bone has got infected, the wound will be healing very slowly. Until you remove the infected bone part, the wound will never get healed. So, you need to find out whether they are in bone involvement. Sometimes, everything is fine, but that have been there for a long time, when you find out, it may be a malignant ulcer. There can be by the malignant ulcer coming from beginning, like a basal cell carcinoma due to exposure to ultraviolet sunlight, like especially in countries like New Zealand and Australia, they have a very high tendency to develop basal cell carcinoma on the head and the face area. Without any causative agent, the, the tumor starts, starts as an ulcer and it's not healing. It may be malignant transformation. Or a chronic wound, it had been there. Now we are correcting all the factors, the local factors, the systemic factors they are correcting, but still the wound is not healing. That may be a malignant transformation. Why? Now, these are the things that you need to consider why a wound is not healing. The factors affecting wound healing. There are barriers affecting wound healing, right? So ultimately, the barriers will come into factors. The one is the barriers to the wound healing ultimately become a factor of wound healing. One is the client factors, the patient itself. Receptive to planning and already has plans. Right? So barrier, now patient is good, now the facilitators are, they are good. When you are giving a plan or now you, you can't move, you can't, you have to come out to the hospital on the correct day and all these things, they are very, very, very happy. Already has their plans and they are, they are very happy to continue. Those barriers are, people who are not coming up, refuse to talk about future needs. They don't need, they does not want to reveal, reveal finances. Unwilling to discuss the plan, unable to participate in planning due to cognitive impairment. So various problems are there. So the patient itself is not willing to get involved in the part of wound healing. Very difficult, right? The, the commonest people like this are the street street beggars. You know, they don't want the wound to get healed. I think they only come to the hospital when the wound is really bad. They can't do anything and they come and they get it. When it's starting to heal, they go back. The family. The family caregivers. Good family caregivers. There's family and a caregiver there and the family is involved in the, in the, in the wound healing. So the process is very easy. So we give them a plan and they follow the plan correctly. And sometimes lack of family. So barriers are lack of family. There's no one in the family to care. No one to dress the wound on time. No one to give the food on time. So that's a problem. Difficulty in access, access in the families. Families, they are, they are blown. No previous relationship with family. Difficult family circumstances. Families unaware of the need. So they are all problems. Case manager. So the person who is managing the patient, that means the person who is getting treatment. So he has knowledge, he has a plan, and he has good experience in wound care. So nice setup. Bad setup is the main carer or the case manager. He doesn't know about wound care. Right? He is having lacks of comfort, lack of training and education. So those are the problems. Program. 
So a projected lack of funding meet the needs, initial assessment tool. So all these things are there, things are good. So program, focus on current care needs, initial take to late plan, and lack of time to planning and lack of communication. The system, what do you mean the system is our healthcare system. Inform providers, client to future plans. Right. So lack of communication with the patients. Right. Plans are you know limit of communication. Provide unaware of case management. So those are the problems of barriers of wound healing. Now I'll just touch in this area. Number one problem for wound healing is infection. Right. These are the commonest type of infection we have right stuff epidemics and stuff audience so it this is a common cell and it it will improve wound healing and this is a infective organism it forms a biofilm now this biofilm will be the real problem for wound healing pathogenic microbes increase the it will increase the other pathogenic microbes and pro inflammatory cytokines are increased oxygen radicals are increased tissue cell death occurs so the only problems can occur with this right so common microbes are pseudonas e coli staphylococcus and streptococcus and if the wounds are not healing, these are the factors that you need to think of. Is it the age? Is the nutrition? Is there a systemic infection? How is the diabetic control? How is hematologic abnormalities? And are there any chronic illnesses? Or are there any local factors like infection, poor blood supply, or continuous movement, foreign body, foreign, foreign body, bone involvement? Or malignant transmission. I'm just putting you in, but most of the time, there's combination of many. Sometimes most of them are old, diabetic, poor nourished, and they have common chronic other diseases. On top of that, wound is infected, and there is poor blood supply. So we need to correct all these; otherwise, wound will never heal. There are some things we can correct, some things we can't correct. No, we can't correct the age of the patient. If the patient is 75 years old, patient is 75 years old, we can't make him younger. But other factors, the factors we can correct, we try to correct. Yeah, with that, I'll be finishing. I'm open for any questions. Any questions? If you can put on the chat if you want to. If you are... reluctant to ask yeah. directly, you can put on the chat. Hmm. Any clarifications? Any questions? You can ask now. Uh, is still empty. Do we need to is anybody alive? Uh, yeah, uh, how frequent do we need to change the dressing? Hmm. Well, it, 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 it depends. It depends on the wound. Sometimes some wound may need to be changed, maybe one in the morning, one in the afternoon. Sometimes you can keep the dressing for about three, four days. It all depending on the the situation of the wound, actually. 
uh, in my point of view, uh, when considering wound healing, is it okay to uh, change the dressing frequently? Then uh, isn't it a problem for the wound healing process? Well, it's like this now. If the wound is dressed today in the morning, by tomorrow, if the outer layer is soaked of your dressing, and if there's that means there is you are exposing your wound into the exterior, bacteria and other other pathogens. So there's a chance that wound can get infected. So if the if the outer layer is soaked. You need to change that dressing. Okay, okay, thank you. So, sir, if the uh, wound is not uh, wet, so no need to change the dressing. No. It it, it depends, Mary. It you, if you have to identify what type of wounds that you are talking about. Is it a dry yeah. wound? Uh, yeah. Or is it a you know lot of uh, some uh, exudating wound. If it is exudating wound, if the outer layer is wet and outer layer is connecting the exterior environment, you need to change the dressing. Otherwise, you can keep it. Usually, for about seventy-two to in the forty-eight to seventy-two hours, you can keep a dressing if provided the outer layer is not breached. So normally the abrasion wound, sir. Normally the abrasion wound. Yeah. Uh, uh, whether we, we need the dressing or not, not, sir. Not need abrasions only if you know if you, if you can apply a small, small layer of uh, you know antiseptic cream or something. No need to do a dressing at all. Someone has yeah, to also the bath, yeah regarding the bath uh, while we uh, apply the soap is is enough, no, sir. Sorry. Cleaning, cleaning the wound, the abrasion wound. Mm -hmm. So, uh, other than using the antiseptic, yeah. uh, can we use the soap while uh, on the bathing? No, so it's it's enough for that one. Yes, yes, you can. And there's someone is asking, how do we decide chronic or acute wound? Please mention the time frame. So acute wound is now you are you are seeing the patient immediately or within twenty four hours of the wound. If the patient comes, that's an acute wound. Chronic wound means that either the acute wound which has been there and not he not showing any signs of healing after two weeks, that is a chronic wound. Can uh, yeah. whether it is defined by the duration, sir? More no, than fourteen really. days, no need. There, there are no signs of healing. Wound does not show any signs of healing. Acute wound becomes chronic after two weeks. If it is not showing any signs of healing, it is it is considered a chronic wound. But sometimes the wound starts itself as a chronic wound, like in a venous ulcer or something. Spontaneously, there's an underlying cause. It usually becomes a chronic wound from the beginning. In normally, so the cancer patient, the uh, cancer oral cancer patient, and uh, uh, normally in that our, our radiotherapy, uh, normally they have the wound, the ulcer, no, so inside the mouth. So yeah. normally they uh, they are asking whether we can use the honey for that. So normally, a lot of patients are without any consideration they are using. Yeah, there's no harm. Uh -huh. I don't know if it will have beneficial effect, but I don't know. There's no harm. Ah, oh, okay. Now, actually, the bee honey has a lot of antioxidants. So, it might help on healing, but for cancers, the healing takes place because of, you know, with uh, radiotherapy, if the patient is having an ulcer inside the mouth, mm. irradiation is not a problem because the skin is not breached, no? It is not an ulcer. And we are not irradiating the wound directly so that will heal uh, if this wound has come out of the face or skin they are not supposed to be given ready to repeat.
Any, Any more questions? Yeah. Explain regarding how to treat biofilm. Well, uh, I think we, we went on to discuss those things last time also. So this is the, the I think there will be another session on how to treat those things, no? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Those things will be uh, discussed in detail. In detail. So, yeah, yeah. so you, you will you will get to know about those things later in the, in, the, in the program. Don't worry. What is the first stage management of? Management for four types of wounds. Well, first stage management all depend on the way out it got injured and how bad is the injury is so that is not the scope of this series of lectures what they are doing at the moment this is about you know the injured injuries occurred in a palliative patients we are discussing here so i if you, because you're asking i'll tell you now it depends on the injury now if it is a contusion or a abrasion kind of a thing there is no nothing much to be done contusion what you can do is you can put some ice there and keep it but if it's a cut injury in a limb or some area of the cut injury you can elevate that time prevent bleeding and keep a clean soft and compress to prevent bleeding and bring the patient to a closest hospital and you know then you only you can see what type of injury what type of tissues has got damage if it is Clean cut, you can suture it immediately. Otherwise, you need to keep it and with antibiotics and clean the wound and you know make the cut edges cleaner and then re-suture it. So there are those are the things that how do you treat? But if it is a crush injury or a you know major stab injury or something or a gunshot injury, the management will be completely different. You need to go by the ATLs protocol, check the airway, breathing circulation, maybe end up in IC tubes, laparotomies, things like that. So it's not a it's not a easy task to discuss about wound like that, you know. We are not only managing a wound, we are managing a patient. So it's it's more complex than that. Uh, sir, as there is no any uh, p uh, drugs for uh, wound healing, uh, is there any dietary advice or is there any nutritional supplement that uh, should be provided to a chronic wound patient or something for the uh, wound healing? Yes, the uh, thing is now what, 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 what wound healing needs is one thing is you need usual energy, protein and vitamins. Energy may be from normal carbohydrate diet and a protein, definitely needed protein for the wound healing process. And what you need is usually you need vitamins like vitamin C and vitamin A and zinc are the factors which is really needed in wound healing. If they are if they are on a balanced diet with normal amount of proteins and carbohydrates and you know nutrients of minerals and fruit fruits and things, these things will come naturally. As a supplement, you can give them a little bit high protein diet if they are not having any uh, you know adequate amount of proteins. You can supplement them with you know extra egg or milk or something. Yeah, as a supplement and you can add some vitamin C and vitamin A and zinc containing minerals for the wound healing. But it doesn't mean that it will make it faster. The wound healing process will take about first 24 hours for the initial phase, then about 3 days, 3 to 7 days for the second phase and it will take about 2 weeks to completely heal the wound. So, even if you you know follow the whole pharmacy, it's not going to increase that time frame. Okay, sir. thank you. Now, question is, you know, other.
example uh, how we can transport body parts uh, when they broken body parts how we transport them into the hospital what do you mean body parts mean for transplantation uh, no no so sometimes uh, that cut, cut injury happen and ah. just like ah, if a finger or a hand get completely cut or oh, cut off yes sir that's procedure sir yeah so if you if, if a finger or something completely cut off or completely you know damage you can put that finger or something on a water bath first a saline would be better if you can put that in a saline bag first and the saline bag should be put on ice you should not put the whole you know the cut part cut body part or the finger in direct contact with ice it should be on a saline compartment put on a saline and put on ice bag if you can't find saline even water is fine but quickly you need transfer yes sir thank you sir Let's continue with it. Any other questions? So some people, uh, some people uh, dress their wounds with Vaseline goes. Uh, is it suitable? Yeah, it depends on the wound. You know, you know, Vaseline goes. When you put a Vaseline goes, it's easy to remove that Vaseline goes rather than a dry dressing. Now, if you if you, if you get acute injury, and if you put a dry soap or something, the next day when you are removing it. Usually the blood clot is, is get stuck with the dressing. So when you are removing it, you need to put pour of saline and wet it and difficult to remove it. If you have put a vaseline goes over, over it and put the dressing over it, it's easier for you to remove it, especially on abrasions, burn injuries, and things like that, where, the, where it's very painful when you are removing it. So putting a vaseline goes is not harmful. And areas like fingers when you're dressing, if you put a uh, if you put a western goes around the two fingers separately and dress the fingers separately, it's better. Otherwise, the, when you're if there's both fingers are have got damage together when you're dressing it together, they can have you know the wound can heal combining these two fingers. Especially burn is if your hand got burned, the whole hand is burned, and if you address the whole hand together with all the fingers attached together, the healing process will occur. You know, he but, but he doesn't know that you know this is my, my uh, first finger and this is the thumb and this is the other finger. The body will heal it together because same man, same body, no. So the fingers will get connected to each other. So there have been should be another surgery to separate them. So those are things that you know putting vaseline goes and dressing them separately is important. There's another question. So what is the good? What is good for burn wounds? Silver dressing or SSD? Well, it, it depends. If in acute phase, SSD. Later, silver dressing.
Yeah, I, I can't hear you. Line is breaking. If you can type it. Should we disconnect? No, can't hear you. Your line is breaking. Can can you type it on the chat? If tendons uh, are visible, that means uh, skin is removed. It's still breaking. Better to type it. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. I'm asking about the transferring of amputation part. Mm -hmm. And then how much time we can consider to uh, trans take place? As quickly as possible. As quickly as possible. As maybe if, if you can transfer it within half an hour, that's better. Longer it takes. The difficulty would be the other it to be taken up by the tissue. If it is past six hours, very difficult. And if it's a small part like finger or something, it may be able to put, but if it's a big part like a hand or a foot or something, you know, after six hours it will it will never take it up. Thank you, sir. But immediately you need to say. Yeah, completely separate body part. How much minimum time? Same thing, no? Someone was asking something about tendons and things, but can't I couldn't hear what she was asking. If you can type, that will be better. But if 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 a if a wound get a wound has got exposed tendons. If an acute wound has got exposed tendon, you should cover it with wet resting goes or something, cover it immediately. And when the wound has shown any signs of healing, or the wound is not having any signs of infection, basically, within about 48 hours, if you can see, you should be covering it with a flap for the tendons. And if a chronic wound, Showing any exposed ten tenders, that means you know the wound has got deep into the chronic part, has gone deep, and usually those tendons are infected. Better remove those tenders. So actually, uh, I can add a little bit uh, onto that. Like, if uh, if if you all see uh, uh, tendons, infected tendons in your uh, the wounds you are managing, that is a that is actually a, a red flag, and uh, that's a point of referral. I think. Am I correct? Uh, yes. Yes. Definitely. Sir, uh, major animal bite wound with excessive bleeding. Uh, as a nurse, uh, we can close the uh, excessive bleeding wound. Yeah, excessive bleeding wound, you can close after cleaning of the wound. Right? Now, the animal bites are usually not closed. Say a dog bite or something, if a major laceration is there and wound is completely, you know, bleeding. So what you can do is if it's a limb part, you can put a tourniquet and send the patient to a hospital and the hospital people should 
clean the wound and dress it and find the bleed and ligate that. Better not suture it immediately. Keeping it for 48 hours, then you can suture it. Right? And if it is not a limb, so in that case, if it is bleeding profusely and you can't find a bleeder, just simple compression would be able to come, you know, control the bleeding and keep it compressed and send the patient to hospital. Okay. And after cleaning, after 48 hours, you can close the wound. Okay, sir. Thank you. But make sure if it's a dog or a cat or a big animal like that or any wild animal, then you need to give anti-rabies vaccine and anti-rabies antibodies to the wound and surrounding area. Yes, sir. What is a suitable application for peristomal skin damage? Well, well, there are various products. So, most of the parastomal areas, there are uh, products made by the you know the companies actually, zinc oxide and uh, zinc oxide and there are uh, there are creams to apply around that area, and that would be the best dressing for the skin exfoliation. Any question at the end of the day? In a wide wound, like uh, uh, with a uh, uh, wide margin, uh, when there is a granulation, that overgrowth, uh, that overgrowth is due to the uh, connective, to, due to the repair or uh, regeneration? Repair. It is, uh, it is, so it is a uh, connective tissue. It's a connective tissue, yes. So why uh, why not the skin? Uh, can't the skin uh, regenerate over there? The skin uh, so is regenerating. For the skin, uh, for a uh, skin graft wound. Yes. Uh, uh, why uh, it is not possible to regenerate uh, skin in a uh, wound there in the... Uh, it will take a long time. It will take a long time for the skin to regenerate to that. That's why we put a skin graft. Uh-huh. Okay, okay. That's why the skin, it, it will take a long time for the skin to regenerate. That's why we need to put a skin graft. Otherwise, the granulation tissue will overgrow before, you know, even over the skin. So, if you put a skin graft, the skin will take up on that granulation tissue blood supply and it will close up the wound, you know, the overgrowth of granulation tissue. Uh, sir, can you repeat your, uh, the uh, previous uh, answer regarding the animal bites, sir? Uh, whether it's uh, bleeding, so I couldn't hear you, sir. No, if it is bleeding, if it's a limb, either the upper limb or lower limb or something, put a proximal tourniquet and send the patient to immediately to the closest hospital, find the bleeding point if it's an artery or something is bleeding. They will either ligate or repair the vessels and leave the wound 
open for 48 hours. And after 48 hours, if there are no signs of infection, then you can close the wound. Okay. okay. If it's a not a not a not, not a limb, a body part, you know, in the trunk or somewhere, then you can compress the wound and come to a hospital if you're bleeding. Compress it as you know tight as possible to minimize the bleeding and find out in the hospital you can find out where the bleeder is. Then you can suture. Again, later after 48 hours. What is the suitable dressing for infected vulvectomy patient? Is suitable metrogel? Now, that's a complex problem you're asking. You're asking a personal problem what you have experienced or something without seeing the patient and, you know, why it got infected, whether the valve was given radiotherapy before or, you know, without knowing that, I can't be answering that question. If a valvectomy patient is having an infected wound, mostly it is contamination from feces. So patient has not been managed properly. That's what I feel. So if the if it is repeatedly getting infected, patient should be put on a temporary colostomy and treat the valvular wound and then close the colostomy. That's what I feel. Sir, in varicose vein, usually for a varicose vein patient, the treatment is uh, surgical removal of uh, that uh, trotion veins. But uh, not so only, not only, not only re removal of the veins. Now, varicose veins patient, the uh, the varicose ulcers are not only due to a tortuous, you know, the superficial varicose veins. It is due to the Deep venous insufficiency. That means uh, the the deep veins, the valves are not functioning properly. So there's pressure pushed outwards on the you know lower part of the leg. So after you are done your superficial varicose vein removal, you need to continue the compressive bandage. Otherwise, oh. the things are not going to heal. Okay. Okay. Uh, how does the foliar bandage help the varicose? Uh, that will have that, that that will have equal compression throughout the leg. Uh, prevent uh, pressure, prevent pressure coming onto the skin. It will minimize the venous pressure. Okay, sir. Sir, can we uh, recommend a seeds bath for the anal ulcer, sir? Yes, yes, we can.
Okay then. Um, uh, if there is no other clarifications or questions um, to Dr. Rangu Pereira, uh, we can. Uh, I can open the floor to Dr. Tosita if he has something to tell. So anyway, thank you so much, Dr. Rango Pereira, for your very interesting uh, uh, presentation. I really like your history part. Uh, thank you. Yeah, it's really good and very attractive. <laughs> I think uh, the lectures of this kind, uh, if you are blending with this history and stuff like that, it is really, really interesting. So very well done. Thank you so much. Uh, then um, Dr. Tusita, do you have anything to uh, add? Uh, or means, uh, because you were in the middle of the thing, you were lost. So, anything to tell them? Uh, no, I them? was just telling them that uh, now usually Google Forms uh, no. are not taken seriously, but this is a very serious exercise. The idea is to convert the knowledge that you gained in the lecture into your own uh, practical scenario. So, repetition of knowledge and uh, converting that into a, 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 a uh, 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 activity. So uh, this is a very serious activity. We need some uh, good writing. Uh, don't bother about the grammar and all those things. Just just uh, uh, know what you are going to tell and just write it. You nobody is checking for English grammar and corrections and all that. Just we just want to understand what you are doing. So uh, it's not that uh, uh, now it's appreciated that. Uh, you, you are writing good English, but uh, you know, just don't uh, don't take it as a burden. But uh, give a good answer. So I I just uh, told everybody what I what we want in each each section. Say like uh, now uh, there's a question called uh, say asking how would this wound heal? How should this wound heal? So now today you heard how wounds heal and you can apply that knowledge. This wound may be uh, here in, uh, it's in, it's in, uh, obviously not in the hemostasis. So it's uh, either should be in proliferation or, uh, the, you know, inflammation uh, in some stage. So you have to stage it and then uh, uh, give a reasonable explanation to how, how what is going to happen to it. So that sort of thing. So uh, in the next lectures also, you have to convert that into, into answers. So uh, that's basically it. Uh, uh, the other thing I missed was to ask whether any, uh, there are any uh, questions about the, the form. Um, it's not a usual uh, Google form. You say yes and no and you know, select uh, various things. You have to write it. Basically, it's a it's a pen and paper exercise in in a Google form. Does anyone find it difficult to uh, type and uh, put up with this? Make a dot amaru the can the Google form make a pura pura wala daane ka amaru ka urari na the. I think silence means no. So that's that's it. Uh, that's what I wanted to tell. Over to you, Professor Madhi, to uh, uh, call it a day. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much. Then this, uh, thank you, Tusita. Then this lecture also, uh, we are going to put 